Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at the Black Comedian, who is almost one of the Three Stooges. There's a good chance you've never heard of Manton Moreland, but if you are lucky enough to have seen him in a film, any film, you'll definitely remember him. Moreland's comic timing manages to transcend the decades in films like King of the Zombies from 1941, where he steals the show, saving what would be an otherwise completely forgettable, and by now probably long forgotten, comedy horror flick. While changing attitudes about black roles in film have hastened Moreland's fall from popularity, he's finally being rediscovered as the talented character actor and comedy genius that that he was. Had history unfolded just a little bit differently, Manton Moreland would likely never have become forgotten in the first place. In fact, he once came awfully close to being cast as one of the Three Stooges. More on that in a moment. In an era where segregation was in full swing, the fact that he was strongly considered to be part of the internationally known trio, let alone be the choice of Moe and Shemp Howard themselves, speaks to his considerable talent as a comedian. Cutting his teeth on the brutally competitive vaudeville stage, Moreland honed his comedy skills doing several live shows a day. Vaudeville was a cutthroat business, with dozens of performers waiting in the wings. Any act that faltered for even a moment would simply be yanked, if not booed, off the stage. Former vaudevillians like Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Bob Hope owe their cinema stardom largely to the quick thinking and high level of professionalism required to make it big on stage. It worked for Moreland too. His talent as a comedian on what was then known as the Chitlin Circuit, the string of nightclubs and theaters deemed safe for black comedians during segregation, soon led to roles in movies. Moreland's earliest roles were in race films made with black actors for black audiences. His first screen role was as a night watchman in a haunted pawn shop in That's the Spirit from 1933. This was followed by a small role as an angel in the Green Pastures from 1936, a retelling of biblical stories as black American folklore. Rex Ingram, Disney's original choice for Uncle Remus, played Delort. Morland was quickly moved up to supporting roles in all-black westerns like Harlem on the Prairie from 1937 and Two Gun Man from Harlem in 1938, playing the comic sidekick to Herb Jeffries, better known as the Bronze Buckaroo, America's first singing black cowboy. Recognizing Recognizing his talent, studios soon snapped him up to play comic relief roles in mainstream movies, in other words, with white casts. But his real break came when he was paired with Frankie Darrow in a series of crime comedies. The two appeared in the films as porters, bellhops, or pages who stumble across murder cases, and hijinks, of course, ensue. While Moreland's performances are stereotypical of the era, he's always the frightened one, the films represent a huge turning point on the part of the studio. Moreland and his white co-star are depicted as friends and equals. A high point of the series is when he and Darrow recreate one of the bits that made Moreland a hit on the stage. The indefinite talk bit appears in Up in the Air in 1940 and pays homage to the routine he developed with Ben Carter in which the two would finish each other's sentences. It would go something like this. I haven't seen you since. Longer than that. Last time I saw you, you lived over. Oh, I moved from there. Yeah? Sure, I moved over to... How could you live in that neighborhood? The series came to an end when Frankie was drafted during World War II, but Monogram hung on to Moreland, recognizing him for the amazing talent he had. Perhaps intentionally, he was featured in some otherwise lackluster films, injecting a healthy dose of humor where there would have been none. King of the Zombies 1941 is perhaps the best known, and nearly every single line spoken by Moreland is memorable, from move over boys, I'm one of the gang now, to if there's anything I wouldn't want to be twice, zombies is both of them. And if you do want to see the movie, which I would highly recommend, you can find a link to it in the description below. Morland was somewhat less valued at other studios, where he didn't receive top billing, but his role in Universal's The Strange Case of Dr. X from 1942 caught the eye of the Three Stooges cast member Shemp Howard. The two appeared together in a gambling scene, and Howard was impressed with Morland's comic timing. He suggested to Brother Mo that Morland would be the perfect replacement stooge should the need ever arise. Meanwhile, Morland was cast as chauffeur Birmingham and Brown in monogram series of Charlie Chan films. While Chauffeur certainly doesn't sound like a memorable role, Moreland, as usual, made the character one of the most memorable parts of the series. In fact, he was the only actor to stay on board for the entire run, appearing in 15 of the 17 films. In two of the Charlie Chan movies, Moreland got to reprise his indefinite talk bit with original vaudeville partner Ben Carter. Both The Scarlet Cube 1945 and Dark Alibi feature versions of the routine that made him famous, and the movies are worth a watch, if just for those segments alone. When the series ended in 1949, Morland saw less and less work. Some attribute his disappearance to the decline of the B-movie in an era that was embracing television, but many historians and biographers think it had more to do with changing political attitudes. 
Black men as servants and chauffeurs were not seen so much as funny, but rather demeaning. It didn't help that Morland's shtick was to play the skittish, frightened man, another stereotype. On the other hand, his performances always seemed to transcend stereotype, and those who knew him said that the deep southern accent and the expressions were true to how Morland really was. His scared out of his wits characters are really not that different from the ones played by Bob Hope, see the Ghost Breakers from 1940. It's easy to understand, though, why Morland's scared routine sits a little uncomfortably today especially as he plays a servant to white men to boot, which is not something Bob Hope had to do. Do you remember Mo Howard's suggestion that Morland would make a great stooge if the need arose? Well, the need did in 1955 with the death of Shemp Howard. At a time when Morland could really use the work, the comedy team suddenly had need of someone with brilliant comic timing and plenty of experience. Morland's biographer Michael H. Price talked to Howard about what a great idea it was. Manson was responsive when Larry Fine and I talked the idea over with him. I mean, we'd all seen our better days by that time, but old Morland, now there was a talent that could have invigorated the whole act. He had the wordplay. You ever heard him do that anticipation routine where he and one or another of his partners finished each other's sentences? And he had the physical shtick, the jive moves and double-take receptions that would have filled in the gaps when Jerome, Curly, and Shemp had kept covered. The studio had other ideas, though, according to Howard. But, of course, Columbia Pictures management demanded a white guy, because they'd apparently been scared off by Manton, and we ended up with that prissy, damned Joe Besser, who was what you might call a pain. I've always thought what a good act the Stooges could have stayed for a while if only we'd have gone with Manton. And, well, that was the end of that. Having appeared in over 300 movies in his career, Morland then only worked sporadically in the industry until his death in 1973 from cerebral brain hemorrhage. His last featured role was as Doomed Delivery Man in 1964's weirdly wonderful comedy horror film Spider Baby, and though the role was small, in true Manson Morland's fashion, it's not easily forgettable. He played a few more blink and you'll miss them roles, wrapping up his film career as a man almost run over by a motorcycle in the softcore film The Young Nurses from 1973. Morland made a few TV appearances on shows like Adam 12 and Love American Style, and released a few raunchy party records on the Laugh label, including That Ain't My Finger. His mashed potatoes punchline famously appears in the Beastie Boys song B-Boys Making with the Freak Freak. One thing Morland never stopped doing was the indefinite talk routine that originally made him famous, performing it up until the last year of his life. Mel Watkins, a black comedy historian, noted that to black audiences it was as well known a classic as Who's On First was to white audiences. Once so famous that his films bore his real life name, Manson Runs for Mayor and Manson Messes Up from 1966, the actor is certainly not a household name today. While he deserves rediscovery, one thing's for sure if Columbia Pictures hadn't been opposed to having a black comedian in one of the most beloved comedy groups of all time, he wouldn't have needed to be rediscovered at all, and his name would have been sealed in mainstream comedy history. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.